not. <laughs> well, glory. Oh, mercy. What a day. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Woo! Oh, my. I'm, I'm so excited about the things that God's doing and the fact that today uh, He is risen, church. He is risen. Hi, Julie. Good to see you, girl. Mercy. Uh, <laughs> I re I'll never forget one Sunday morning when we were pastoring in Utah and I was in my office and I was, we had a big day planned and uh, we had uh, a live drama presentation that we were going to put on and the whip hammer and the cross and all. I mean, it was a full blown uh, deal and, and, I was nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I mean, it was I was nervous. And, uh, and uh, I, I got a phone call in my office, and one of the guys that was on my board um, called me from, from the airport in, in Tel Aviv. And he said, Pastor... I just came from the tomb, and he's not there. He said, I just came from the tomb, and he is not there. He is risen. And all the... the Tammy preached... I, I don't know why she didn't just take an offering while she was at it. I mean, she preached here this morning, and she talked about anxiety. And your, your pastor was full of it that morning. I mean, I was nervous. But as soon as they, he called me and said that, that just left. And I knew that we were in for one that day. <laughs> and boy, were we. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. Our, our Lord is truly risen from the grave and, and today is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Lord, we are so grateful. We're so grateful that you are you are risen. That is our foundational truth, Lord. That we as your, your, your body, we cling to that, Lord. And Father, today I pray that you'd help me to declare this message in such a way that, Lord, that people would leave here today with a, a, fresh, a fresh realization of what you have done for us individually. And so, God, I thank you for it. I give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Turn with me this morning, Luke chapter 24. The Gospel of Luke chapter 24. I'm going to read the first nine verses, and then we'll jump down and I'll read verse 11. Luke chapter 24. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And they, then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened. As they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead. Woo! Mm. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Father, I thank you for your word. In verse 11 it says, And their words seemed like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Listen, if, if you are not familiar with, with the, the content of what's been happening, Jesus, for three and a half years, has been walking with the disciples. He's handpicked a group of men and he's begun to deliver to them. He's began to pour into them uh, all that uh, that
that they needed to begin to continue to pro to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes and 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 what that all entails and 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 that he was going to be handed over and he was going to be crucified and they couldn't understand that they didn't know why they didn't understand it and one of the 12 Judas Iscariot betrayed him at the last supper when he was putting the final preparations and 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 they couldn't understand that and probably you and I can't really understand that here today why would Jesus handpick somebody that he knew was going to betray him? You see, the death that Jesus died on the cross was, it was awful. It was bad. It was brutal. He was brutalized. He was beaten. He was scourged. He, he, he was mocked. He was ridiculed. And, and his own people picked him to be crucified over a convicted murderer even though they couldn't find enough uh, evidence to convict him of anything because he was guilty of nothing. So his death on the cross was awful. We look at it, we see that it was awful. We, we, see, we see the pictures uh, uh, of Jesus hanging on the cross and, and we see that He's got the crown of thorns which we have represented right there. We see that He has that on His head and there's little trickles of blood coming down His face. And where they beat His body, they have little stripes and little marks and those kinds of things. And let me just tell you something, church. That's nonsense. That's not a, a depiction of of what happened they didn't set gently that crown of thorns on his head they jammed it down over his ears and 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 those old judean thorns which is exactly what that is are hard as nails and sharp as razors they don't bend they don't skip along i i put one of them i set it gently on my head and I, and just setting it on my head made my head bleed they're sharp the beating that he endured, he, they didn't just give him a spanking. They beat him. They scourged him. There's a difference between being whipped and scourged. This whip that they had, they got two of the biggest guys that they could find of Roman soldiers. and One stood on one side and one stood on the other and they took turns. And they were perfectly timed. And when, they would, when, those, when the ends of that whip would hit, and they had little pieces of pottery and, and metal and, and those kinds of things uh, tied on the end, and when they would lay those stripes on him, as soon as it would hit, they would jerk so that it would inflict the most damage. Jesus was beaten to the point of, of being nearly unrecognizable unrecognizable it was an awful death after being beaten that way they made him carry his own cross down the Via Della Rosa to the hill of the skull and when he couldn't carry it anymore they persuaded one from the crowd to carry the cross for Jesus Listen, the death that Jesus died for us is an awful death. It's an awful death. But church, it's not the end of the story. That is not the end of the story. The reality is, it's really just the beginning. Within three days, Jesus, in fact, rises from the tomb. The women who visited the empty tomb were surprised. The disciples were astonished. And Thomas went so far as to even doubt. I ain't going to believe unless I can put my finger in the holes in his hand and my hand in the, side, in the gaping gap, in the wound in his side. I'm not going to believe. He'd spent three and a half years preparing these guys for this day. Even though Jesus had predicted his own resurrection in Luke chapter 9, verse 22 and chapter 18, nobody believed that it would happen. 
Nobody believed that it was really going to happen. Can I tell you today, there are multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of people who do not believe that he's coming back. Newsflash, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Bam, he's coming. And here's the, here's the other thing. It, when he gets here, when he gets here, you better be ready to go. Because he ain't going to wait around for you to get it right. The resurrection. The disciples, they, they talked of his resurrection as nonsense in chapter 24 and verse 11. And their words seemed like idle tales and they did not believe him. He had just been telling them for three and a half years this is coming. And now the day is here. And they're like, well, I don't know. The resurrection was a complete surprise. It was a complete surprise. It was like, what in the world? It was this pleasant surprise that motivated the disciples to become fearless witnesses to the truth. Listen, they would see Jesus with their very own eyes in chapter 24, verses 36 through 40. We ain't got time to go through through all of these so you write them down and go check it for yourself he would teach them from the scriptures in chapter 24 and verse 25 through 27 knowing that jesus was still alive it inspired them to withstand all kinds of hardship they endured beatings they even endured death to tell others about jesus christ and what he did They've been all there. There have been all kinds of nuts out there in the world that have said that Jesus did not, in fact, rise from the dead, and that his body was stolen or it was taken somewhere else by the disciples. But let me just dis let me just disprove that for you here this morning. See, the resurrection of Jesus is confirmed by some facts. There are some factual things that we can look at and, and we will know. Listen, how many of you know that the Romans and the, the Jews and those, they hated Jesus. They wanted to do everything that they could to disprove anything about Jesus. Listen to this. The number one testimony is the fact that the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. Well, they could have stole him. They could have taken him away. They could have this, that, whatever. They could have got a bunch of guys to, to move the stone. Yeah, they probably could. But listen, the, uh, if the enemies of Jesus had taken his body, do you think that they wouldn't have shown it? I mean, they'd have paraded that thing around town. They'd have put it in the back of a, 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 a well, they didn't have pickups. But they probably had trailers or something that they drug behind a two-hump camel or something. I don't know. But I'll guarantee you one thing, they would have paraded him around town. He didn't raise from the dead. We got him right here, and he is still dead. So if the enemies had taken, they would have, they'd have shown it to prove that Jesus had not risen. Listen, if the disciples, let's jump on the other side of the fence. If the disciples had taken the body, if the disciples had taken his body, do you think that they would have sacrificed their lives for something that they knew? was not true do you think that they would have done all those things another fact that can't be overlooked is the existence the power the joy and the devotion of the early church if jesus hadn't really risen from the dead and appeared to them they would have never changed from despondency to unheard of joy and courage and hope they went from gloom and doom. I mean, Jesus shows up when they're on their road to Emmaus. And they're walking along and they're like, Boy, I'll tell you what, all these boys a bad day in town. I'll tell you what, man, these last few days have been bad. The guy, we put all of our trust in him. We put our hope in him. We put our faith. For three and a half years, we quit fishing. We did all that stuff. Matthew quit taxing, collecting tax. I mean, we did all this stuff. And now he's just dead. They were despondent. They were heartbroken. 
Jesus shows up walking right there. What are you guys talking about? What's this conversation that I'm hearing? Oh, haven't you heard? Where, you're not from around here or what? I mean, that's what that's exactly what he's like, what? You guys know you be would you just crawl out from under a rock? Hell oh yeah, I did. That one just came to me. That was good though. That was good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did just crawl out from behind a rock. Woo! And, and aren't you glad for it? What? Where? Where? You, you don't. You don't. Don't you know what's been going on around here? They went from gloom and doom to unheard of joy and courage and hope. Today, church, Jesus is still alive. He's at the right hand of God. The Father, Acts chapter 2 and verse 33 says, Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He poured out this which you now see and hear. Listen, the resurrection still stands today as the foundation of the Christian church. Listen, I mean, we're talking about foundations. We're going to pour a foundation out here and we're going to build a building on it. It's going to have rebar in it. It's going, to be, it's, going to be, it's going to be good concrete. I mean, it's going to be the right stuff, right? If It doesn't make any difference how thick it is, how deep it is, how secure, how strong it is. If that church is not built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, it will crumble. It might still stand, but internally, it will not stand. It's got to be built on the solid rock, the foundation of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. It is the foundation, the resurrection is the foundation of our faith. And Christians can have complete confidence that Christ is alive, that he's in fact guiding the church and individual Christians through the Holy Spirit. Listen, if I was God, and I'm not, I'd have killed me a long time ago. Hello. <laughs> Some of you are nodding, yeah. Some of you are probably saying, yeah, I would have too. <laughs> you didn't say that, did you? I didn't think so. <laughs> His own resurrection, church, is a guarantee uh, of the future resurrection. Death has already been conquered. I love, I love me some southern gospel music. I'm telling you, an old Jake Hess sang a song. He said, death ain't no big deal. And when you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when your hope is on the other side, death is no big deal. Moreover, the, the same power that brought Christ, Christ's body back from the dead is available to every one of us today, bringing each spiritually dead person back to life. I mean, you know, the Bible says that you're dead in your transgression. That's why... In, 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 in my estimation and in, in many others, there is no greater miracle than for someone to get born again. I've seen people get healed. I've seen people delivered. But there is nothing like somebody being born again. The old things pass away. All things become new. So the resurrection uh, of Jesus from the dead is indeed the central fact of Christian history. On it, the church is built. Without it, there would be no Christian church today. Jesus' resurrection is unique. There are religions out there that have strong ethical systems. They have concepts about paradise and the afterlife. They even have their own various holy scriptures. But only Christianity has a God who became human. Who literally died in place of his people. And was in fact raised again in power and glory to rule his church forever. Ha! Amen? So the question then, the question that people will ask is this. Well, why is the resurrection so important? And I got a lot to say in response to that. I got things to say like this. Because Christ was raised from the dead, 
we know that the kingdom of heaven has broken into earth's history. Our world is now headed for redemption and no longer disaster. God's mighty power is at work destroying sin, creating new lives, and preparing us for the return of Jesus Christ. He's coming back, church. And he's going to receive uh, his bride. That's us. Men, suck it up. You're going to be the bride. Okay? I don't know what to tell you. That's just the way it is. And, (laughs) oh, Lord. So because of the resurrection, we know that death has been conquered. Death has been conquered. The Bible says that he defeated death. Death, hell, and the grave. The grave couldn't hold him. I'm telling you on about day one when Jesus died, the devil and all of his little demons, they were like, oh yeah, we got him. We got him. He could not get away, man. We got him. We nailed him to the cross. Woo! But then he showed up down there (laughs) and said hand them over give me the keys and in front of all his little demons in front of all his little minions not the yellow ones the other ones He took those keys and he released those people. And the devil started freaking out. And he's been freaking out ever since. And listen, church, let me encourage you today. If you're getting harassed by the devil, count it all joy. Well, personally, I don't like it. It's like I got this target on me. But you know what? If if I wasn't a threat to him, he wouldn't be messing with me. If he's messing with you, thank God. Because he don't like you. He's worried about you. He is stressing out about you. And when that rock rolled out from in front of the tomb and Jesus showed up, The devil knew it's over. The resurrection church gives authority to our witness in the world. Look at the early evangelistic sermons back in the book of Acts. The apostles' most important message was the proclamation that Jesus Christ had in fact been raised from the dead. The, the, The Romans didn't have him or they'd have been parading him. The disciples didn't have him or they wouldn't be in the town square preaching Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. They would have been hiding in a hole somewhere. They were proclaiming Jesus Christ had been raised. The resurrection, it helps us find meaning even in great tragedy. No matter what happens to you and I as we walk with the Lord, the resurrection gives us hope for the future. I have a hope. The resurrection assures us that Christ is alive and ruling his kingdom. He is not a legend. He is alive and he is real. And God's power that brought Jesus back from the dead, church, is available to you and I so that we can live for him in an evil world that is bent on your destruction and mine. So God's word tells us that on a cross, Christ bore our sins. He endured our punishment. And He laid His life down as a sacrifice once for all. So the message of Easter then is not that Jesus is alive, but rather that He's risen. There's a difference, church. See, the Son of God was alive in heaven before He ever took on human flesh. So it isn't that he was just alive. He's been risen. 
from the dead. See, the, the, the angels could still have appeared on Easter Sunday and said, well, his body is, is here in the tomb, but hey, don't worry, his spirit is in heaven with the Father. I mean, that's exactly what you and I say at, at funerals. It's exactly what we say at funerals. The, the, the message of, of Easter is that he is risen. He, he's risen. See, it, it's not just the spirit of Jesus that was delivered from death. It was his body. God joined the body and the soul back together. Death had separated them. That's why it's such a terrible enemy. It's the undoing, literally, of our nature. Victory over death would only be achieved if the body and the soul are united in power of new life. That's the good news of the resurrection. God sent His Son to redeem the whole you, to bring you body and soul into His presence. The good news is that Christ is risen. The resurrection of the body is the glorious future that lies ahead for every Christian believer. Listen, it might seem like a narrow way, but it's the only way. And the fact that we even were given a way, it ought to make us rejoice. Thank God that you at least give us some way. Might be narrow, but I'm going. I saw the craziest thing on Facebook. <laughs> Go figure. In fact, Tom posted it. Of this nut on a bicycle riding this rocky trail. I mean, it's literally uh, like this wide, and it is miles down on one side, and it's just all rock, right? And this guy's flying on this pedal bicycle, I mean, and he's going, and I'm like, oh my. And I mean, he is flying, isn't he? I mean, you, you commented on it. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. And it's a narrow trail, and this guy is flying. It's, he wasn't saying, you know what? I, 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 what I was thinking was, <laughs> would be good. I would do that if it was like way wider. Way wider. Yeah, like a football field. Wide. This guy was flying down. He did not have a problem with it being a narrow way. It was a challenge to him. The good news is, we have a future that lies ahead. And when the body of Jesus was raised, church, listen to this. When his body was changed, was, 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 was uh, raised, it was changed. His body was changed. And, and listen, that's something that has to happen. It had never happened before, but it's what ha it has to happen. Because your flesh is corruption. And corruption ain't going to be in heaven. So there's got to come a change. Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead. How many of you know that's true? Jesus brought him back. It was a, a fantastic miracle. How many of you know that his sisters and, the, and all their friends were rejoiced? They, it, was, it was a great day. He came out of the tomb exactly how he went in there. That poor sucker had to die all over again. He had to go through death again. Lazarus, he come out, he carries on the process of aging at the same point that he had left off. He, he then dies again through this whole miserable business of dying. But when Christ was raised, his body was no longer subject to aging or sickness. His flesh was transformed and adapted for eternity. That's why you and I can look forward to heaven. Listen, this old junk here is going down the road, and I'm getting a new one. Woo! I'm going to be able to just jump up instead of going... Ugh. Uh. Tammy says, what's wrong? I'm like, no, nothing. 
just take me a minute to get up, you know. I'm getting a new one. You're getting a new one. Mike, you're going to get a new one. Woo! If I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have took better care of this one, I can tell you that. <laughs> Listen. The greatest delight of the body and the soul in this life are only a hint of what God's prepared for those who love Him. Christian, you and I can look differently uh, uh, from one to another and we can hold widely varying beliefs about politics and about lifestyle and, and even about theology, but there's one central belief that unifies all of us as true Christians, and it is that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. I mean, I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, pew jumper, I don't care what you are, as long as that is your foundation, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of God, you're in the right crowd. That's what this day is all about. Listen, it ain't about that pile, what did you say, 2,500? 1,500. <laughs> how, did I, how did I know that was coming? It don't make a difference whether there's 2,500 or 5. It isn't about that pile of eggs. It ain't about the Easter bunny. It ain't about any of that. It's about the truth of the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 10, give us the words of hope that some of you here this morning, maybe those of you watching today by way of the internet, need to hear this. And I'm closing. Try, trying to. Verse 8, Romans chapter 5. But God demonstrated. But God demonstrated His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by, by the way, that word justified is an important word. If you don't know what justified means, I'm going to tell you. Justified means just as if it didn't happen. That mess in your life, when you give your life to Jesus, when He comes in and washes you in the blood, and, and write your name just like it never happened. The devil's like, I, but I remember. Jesus like, no, I, I got nothing. Justified. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For when, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Huh. That's the good news, church. While we were still sinners is the most amazing words you and I can hear. The Bible says in another place, while we were yet His enemy. Christ gave His life for you and I. Listen, God sent Jesus to die for us. Not because we were good enough, but because He loved us. Whenever you feel uncertain about God's love for you, you need to be reminded of Romans chapter 5. He loved you way before you turned to Him. He loved you when you were doing 
the most wicked thing you ever did. He loved you through all of that. See, the love that caused Christ to die is the same love that sends the Holy Spirit to live in us and guide us every day. The power that raised Christ from the dead. Church, it's the same power that saved you and I, and it is available to you and I in our daily life. You know why we don't have more action of the Holy Spirit in our life? Because we don't ask Him for it. Because we don't trust Him with our life. Be assured, church, that having begun a life with Christ, you have a reserve of power and of love to call on every day for help to meet every challenge or trial. God said in His Word, I'll never let anything come upon you but what you can't handle. Everything that you and I go through has to go through Him first. Remember Job? God said, have you considered my servant, Job? You can do whatever you want to him except kill him. Aren't you glad that you're not Job today? (laughs) Whatever you want, just you can't kill him. Church, we can pray for God's power and for his love any time that we need it. Bow your heads with me. saw I saw a, a cross and I have this thought every time I see one this is a cross a beautiful cross and on it Jesus is nailed and it's a beautiful cross and and you may have a necklace on right now with a a cross with Jesus on it. You could have that on right now, and I'm not speaking ill of you or it or anything else, but I want you to be reminded of one thing today. He is not on the cross anymore. He's not in the grave anymore. He is at the right hand of His Father in heaven, and He's making intercession on your behalf and on mine. This morning... The Holy Spirit is working in your life, whether whether you realize it or not. In fact, I would imagine that if He's working on you, you realize it. You probably just don't know what it is. There is something of the Holy Spirit because you can't have a service like we've had here this morning and not, not have the convicting power of the Spirit of God working in your life. Because let me tell you something. God said in His Word, I'm not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's His Word. In John 3 and 16, He says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's you and I, that whosoever would believe. That's to give mental uh, assent to what God's Word has said about your life. You need to come to the place, church, where you realize and you recognize and you you admit that you are a sinner in need of Jesus Christ. That's not con, 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 condemning. And it's not condemnation. It's a reality. It's your nature. You can't help but be a sinner. It's your nature. And until you are born again, you walk in that same nature. Jesus is saying, listen, I'm not willing that any would perish. I gave my son. He didn't have plan B. If plan A doesn't work, there's no other plan. Plan A is the only way. And that's through the cross of Jesus Christ. Church, he looked down through the corridors of time, and he saw you. He saw me. If you'd have known me when I was a young man, When I was in school, when I was running around, hanging with every 
demon devil from hell that I could find. Drinking and drugs. All that mess. God had a plan. And he had a purpose for my life. The devil has, has, has forever been trying to, to take me out. I'm reminded this morning of a time when I didn't have anything to play with for the most part as a kid. My mom gave me a paring knife with a wooden handle. Said, here, carve these boxes up behind the stove. It was an old wood stove, but it had a, an electric oven powered by a, two, a 220. How many of you know it doesn't take very long for a three-year-old to get tired of cutting on a cardboard box when he can see a, a, a pigtail about that big around that's black that would be much more fun to carve on until you cut through it. And when I cut through it, it put two big scallops in the blade of that knife, blew me across the room, set the house on fire. I'm still here. My brother was a model car builder. He left his paint thinner out. Guess who found it? Guess who drank it? Guess who the devil's been trying to kill his whole life? But I'm still here. If you think I'm making this up, you can ask this lady right there because she lived right across the field. She knows what I'm saying is the truth. Just because you go through some things don't mean that God don't love you. It's the fact that the devil's trying to kill you. He's trying to take you out. This morning, heads are bowed and people are praying. Christ says in his word, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. I'm asking anybody that will open the door. If you'll open the door to me, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. We'll have fellowship. What he's saying is, if you'll open the door of your heart and allow me to come in, I'll save your soul. I'll give you that new body on resurrection day when I come back for the church. He's saying, listen, all that mess in your life, I took care of it at the cross. This morning, Holy Spirit, tugging on your heart strength, this morning, he's saying, won't you come to the altar? Won't you surrender your life? I promise you, the life that he has is better than the life you have. He loves you. He died for you. He's known you from before the foundation of the earth. And nothing you have done today yesterday or that you'll ever do tomorrow has caught him off guard he's gone to great length to prove his love for you and for me and today with heads bowed and eyes closed people are praying right now if you're watching by way of the internet this 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 altar call is for you you have to ask yourself one question today church if jesus christ showed up in our parking lot today and said this bus is going to glory if you if you have a ticket if your name is on the roster get on board because we're about to leave if you if you don't know for sure that you could get on that bus you can know before you ever leave this building today those of you on the internet, if he pulled up in front of your house and said, hey, the, the bus is leaving. If you're not sure whether he's talking to you or not, I want you to know that today you can know for sure. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth 
in him. See, the Bible says in one place, it says, listen, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It'll make no difference how bad you've been. You've, you've not been too bad yet. You've not been too bad. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've never personally asked Jesus to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you and to write your name in the Lamb's book of life. If you've never done that, today is your day. You need to do that. That resurrection power can begin to rule and reign and reside in your life. If that's you today, I'm going to ask you to just slip your hand up. Anybody at all say, Preacher, yeah, that's, that's me. I need, I need Jesus in my life. Maybe you're here today, and at some point in your life, you surrendered to Jesus, but life happened, stuff happened. You, 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 one day at a time, you ended up walking away from the Lord, and, and, you, and you find yourself in a faraway place. But today, through this message and through the power of the Holy Spirit, you come to the place where you realize, I need to get back to Jesus. I need to be back with Jesus. If that's you, you want to recommit, rededicate your life to the Lord, I'm going to ask you today to slip your hand up because I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Anybody at all say, yeah, that's me, preacher. Thank you, Lord. If you're watching by way of the internet, you, you might have your hand up in your house. I can't see that. But if you do, would you just make a notation? We've got people that are that are online right now in our church that can pray with you. Just write something down. Say, yep, I got my hand up. I need Jesus. Father, we love you today. God, we're grateful today that you would save a wretch like me. That you would give your perfect son for a sinner like me. God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for this day. I pray your blessing on every person in this place. I pray your blessing on every person watching by way of the internet today. Heaven's not someplace you want to miss. God, be with us walk with us as families gather after this service have a meal there's going to be there's probably going to be egg hunt there's going to be one right here in just a minute but God may we remember that you're the reason you're the reason you're the reason we celebrate this day and for that we give you all the praise glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen.